Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Noble, part of the Cape Quick Sales team. Uh, today we're going to be doing another one of the videos with my friend Jamie Clues from RoboCoop, following on from the last session a couple of months ago. Uh, today we're going to be looking at vegan dishes um, because it's one of the fastest growing food trends in the UK. Um, and it's important that there's a food offering for everyone out there. And also, if you're not kind of sure what to do or how to utilize your equipment, what you can do with a RoboCoop piece of equipment. Um, Jamie Clues is going to go through uh, some basic recipes, explain how the machine works. Um, the sales team are upstairs, so if you have any questions at any point, fire them in onto the Facebook. Um, and my handy assistant, Andy, will write them on the board. I'll make sure they get a shout out. Um, so, Jamie, do you want to give us a run through of what we're going through today? Yeah, of course. So, I'll take you through the machine first, just give you a little bit of an introduction. So, this is the Robo Cook. Okay, so this is one of our newest machines. Now, this works as a blender, so you have a blender attachment also works as a bowl cutter, so a standard food processor, so it comes with both blades, okay? Now, your lid is slightly different to what most bowl cutters or food processors. We have the internal paddle, which means you don't have to keep taking the lid off to scrape down the mix, okay? And inside, the internal tube's a lot higher, so you can get a lot more liquid in there than you normally would. One of the cool functions, which I know a lot of chefs really enjoy, it's got a magnetically held in blade, so as you're pouring out the sauce, yeah. it doesn't fall out, which is There's nothing worse than having function. to pull the blade out and then all the, uh, all all the liquid in the case goes underneath. Things, yeah. isn't it? Now, so the Robo Cook um, is a cooking, heating, uh, blender and bowl cutter <coughs> all in one. So on the front here, you've got two temperature controls. You've got an aggressive or gentle heat. We can adjust that up by one degree increment up to 140 degrees. But today we're not going to use the heat, we're just going to use it ambient. You've then got the speed. Your normal bowl cutter will go about 1500 RPM up to about 3000 RPM. This will go to 3500 RPM. Okay? You've then got the timer, so we can get it to count down or count up or start counting as soon as it hits the temperature, whichever way is easiest. You've also got nine programs. Each program has got up to nine stages, so you can just stick your recipes in there and press a button and away you go. You've got your pulse on and off button as a normal machine. Now, let's turn it up to full speed. It's quite a silent, quiet yeah, running machine. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make too much noise, which is great. That's running at 3,500 RPM rotations per minute. If we press this black button, we get turbo. That's now running at 4,500 yeah. RPM. We can adjust the RPM speed um, by about 100 to uh, 10 RPM per, per minute. We can then make it pulse, so it just stirs, stops, stirs and stops, which is great if you're using the cooking element. Or we can also make the blade go in reverse. Now the advantage of that, instead of chopping, it's in stirring, so it's hitting the back of the blade. Yeah. So I know before we made the uh, risotto, I think, wasn't it? Um, which is great because you could put your ingredients in, chop them up, put the heat on, cook it off, yeah. then add the rice and it just stirs it Good for in. herbs, if you're putting herbs in the risotto and you blend it, it's going to break all the fibres of the herbs, but if you mix it, it's just going to stir it through. Totally. It's one of those yeah. functions that you don't think you need until you have it and you're like, oh wow, this is yeah, actually yeah. cool. Uh, it just makes life so much easier. So you haven't got to empty all the mix out, stir it in and put it back or do something else with it. Um, which is great for those things, you know, like the risottos and, and stuff that we said about. as well. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, <coughs> we're going to make cashew butter, cashew milk, which yeah. we're going to turn the cashew butter into cashew milk. But you could do that with uh, almonds, you could do it with oats, uh, what else they got? Rice milks. Coconut. Uh, coconut milk. Basically, same sort of similar concept yeah. um, using the blender attachment. We're then going to make a vegan mayonnaise uh, and then we're going to finish off with a, a beetroot hummus, yeah. um, which I can show you the Greek and the Lebanese. So it's all very quick, easy dishes that, yeah. from a chef's perspective, are things you might not worry about. I mean, especially mayonnaise. Yeah, well, I was going to say, making mayonnaise, especially on a live stream, the work that normally goes into making mayonnaise, hand whisking for about 20 minutes, yeah. incorporating the oil at the right speed. Yeah, so it's quite and a brave one, isn't it? I think the other thing has been as well, there's always been a, a slight worry about um, eggs, which is why a lot of people, what was it, back in the 80s or 90s, there was that big air, egg scare, wasn't there? And I think a lot of people were a bit worried of using raw eggs. I think people got scared off of making their own mayos and stuff in professional kitchens. I think I've even heard of, um, bef uh, quite early on in my career, we, you had to apply for someone to come out and check over your kitchen to make oh, sure really? you were 
preparing and storing your homemade mayonnaise in, in the right way. Yeah, yeah. So instantly that's going to put anyone off, isn't it, making their own mayonnaise. Well, this is a great thing with vegan mayonnaise because obviously there's no eggs. So that risk is no risk. massively reduced down. No risk. So almond butter or cashew butter is we're going to make now. So I've had a little bit of oil in there. So if the nuts are quite moist and quite oily, yeah. you wouldn't need to do that. Um, just because these ones I've got a little bit on the dry side. So we're using the blender attachment in there. Okay, so we're going to put the lid on the top. Now we're not going to use any heat today. We're just going to use the ambient functions just to show you what you can do there. It's quite important, I think, because the, it, it's a robo cook, but it doesn't just cook. I think that's, yeah. that's important. They, they, utilizing it in your kitchen to make a lot of other things and making it work for everyone in the kitchen as well. Cold prep and hot prep. Yeah, It's totally. important. It's I mean, important. using it as you would as a bowl cutter, as a food processor, but then having that blender attachment and having this larger jug compared to a normal blender just gives you so many more functions. So what I'm going to do, I've set the speed to 3,500 RPM. We've, uh, we'll ignore the time at the moment because we don't need to do that, so let's reset that back up so you can see. Temperature, we're just going to keep it ambient, as we said. So let's just pulse it a couple of times, just break it down. Then we're just going to run the machine. Now we use the paddle on the top to make, to make sure we bring it down, okay? Now we run that for roughly around about 50 seconds. But if you listen to it, you'll hear it start to change. So it's yeah, quite noisy, nice comes down, and then you'll hear it as it starts to sort of clump up and become more yeah, than that button. Yeah, you can hear it now. There we go. So using that paddle again, just bring the mixture back down. It makes light work of it, to be fair, it does. It doesn't take long at all. I mean, like I said, you could do this with pretty much any nuts. Yeah. The oilier, the better. You get a smoother, better finish. I think uh, working in sales, speaking to a lot of people um, on, on, on the day-to-day, -day, there's a lot more people talking about how do they make their own nut butters in their kitchen and stuff. Yeah. And it's something maybe a lot of people don't realise that you can easily do with a tabletop piece of equipment. You don't need to spend £15,000 straight away if you're making a peanut butter for a, for a Sunday menu or something that you're doing and you want little bespoke artisanal offerings. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it, this is really good. I mean, there. this is great to do like your own peanut butter on toast. You see there, we've just turned it into a This a completely nice changed the structure smooth straight butter. away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, if it's oilier, you're going to get it to sort of come down a little bit more. Um, so you are better trying to use the oilier. Yeah. Um, it's clever juice. if you made a nice smooth peanut butter, but you wanted to get some texture in it. Now, literally, you can reverse oh. the blade, yeah. put in some crushed up nuts to get a bit of texture, some yeah. bite into it, yeah. mix it through and take it out. And again, that's one of the fantastic uses with the R mix function. So we're getting that to sort of rotate around. So, nut butter, done. That's okay. fast. Nice and quick. That yeah. took 54 seconds. I think there's a, there's a lot of other little bits <clears throat> that take time over time that you don't appreciate. So if you had a peanut butter and you want a texture in there, you're going to have to take everything out, yep. scoop it all, put it into a bowl, mix it. So now you've got a dirty bowl, a dirty RoboCoop, a dirty spoon. KP's now having to wash those dishes. Yep. Literally, it's boom. And now Reverse, done, done. So if you were doing a nut butter and then you want to do a nut milk straight afterwards, make up your nut butter, take out what you want, as we've done there. Then all we're going to do is add water. Yeah. Okay. So just pour the water in there. Now, the, the amount of water to the amount of nuts depends completely on what consistency. More water makes more of a milk, less water makes more of a cream, yeah. basically. So all we're going to do is, again, bless you. Oh, thank you. Put that in, close the lid because we don't want it shooting out the top. Press the on button. <coughs> Turn it off. Okay. Oh, put a bit too much in there. So now, what we're going to have... It's something I don't really... Having experienced, I worked for a long time in kitchens, and this is all sort of stuff that's coming across now, so it's nice to learn at the same time. Yeah. There we go, now it's working. There we go. Now the lid on fully there, you put it in. Okay, so now we've basically just blended that milk, um, that, sorry, that water with the nuts to make it into a nice, creamy consistency. 
Then what you want to do is you want to pass it through a sieve. Uh, I've actually got one of these specially made uh, nut milk sieves. Yeah, you get anything them by. Anything really them. Yeah. fine works really well. Now, you know we showed earlier about the, uh, the blade not coming out. This is where it comes in really useful. Because I need two hands, the blade's going to stay in there while I can pour the mixture through. I think any chef in the UK that uses a robo coupe will understand how important yeah. that is. It's fantastic. It makes life so much easier. I think it's one of those things that whenever we show it to people, it's always the chefs that yeah. do tend to get really excited. I think, it, I think it's great because if you're, if, you, if you're making a Thai curry and you're only making it on one night or something you're doing a la carte, you can make a coconut milk like this. Yeah. You don't have to buy it. It's all out of a tin and stuff. It, you can really say that it's 100% homemade on site. Yeah. Fresh. And the great thing is you can change the consistency to what you want to your recipe. You can use a different type of nuts. You can maybe roast them as well if you want that sort of deeper flavour. So all we're doing now is we're basically, we're just getting the milk out of there. Okay. Yeah. So we are almost milking the nut, if you like. It's probably the easiest way to explain it. Um, and we're just going to keep extracting that till we got it to the consistency we want. And we're getting all the, uh, the liquid out. Yeah. We don't want any bits in there. Now, also, what's left in the back doesn't have to go in the bin either. That can be utilised elsewhere. You can make a nice crumb of that, dehydrate it in the oven, yeah. get it into a twill mix, and you've got some yeah. nut biscuits to go with your desserts at night. I mean, the great thing is with the blender attachment, because of the speed and the way the blade's set, you're not going to get that much wastage come through. No. Um, I mean, see there, we've almost got most of that out. I could take that a little bit further, but for the sake of the video, we'll, we'll just keep that to that level for you. Um, <coughs> perfect. So, let's put this into the jug and you'll see the consistency of what we got. At slight, I would say it's almost single cream yeah, level. Yeah, it's got, it's got a thickness to it. Yeah, so if you wanted it slightly thinner, bit more water, yeah. bit more water. That's it. And we've made, I had, it's about four, five hundred. So we made about 700 mil, add more water, probably make about a good litre out of the nuts that I had just then. And there we've got <coughs> cashew milk. Okay, so literally we've, now just made cashew butter. We've just made cashew milk uh, in a couple of minutes. That's very good. Just using the same machine. Okay. So next we're going to do um, the vegan mayonnaise. Vegan mayonnaise. Um, so the vegan mayonnaise is the same recipe as a normal mayonnaise, with the exception, obviously, of the milk. Uh, of the milk, sorry, of the eggs. So we want to take the eggs out of it. So instead what we do is we use um, what's called aquafabia. Yeah, this, okay. is, this is something that's completely new to me. It's quite fast. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's just chickpea juice. It'd um, be interesting to actually find out who, who come up with it because it's a great, great idea. But it worked exactly the same way as an egg white would work. Okay. So if you want to talk through the, the extra functions there, I'll just... Wash this bowl up a second. Sure, no problem. And then we can crack on making that one. Um, while Jamie's uh, doing a bit of wash up, getting the bowl sorted, um, there's a couple of uh, things that I want to go through. Um, obviously, if you're watching and you've got any questions, the guys are upstairs, fire them in, and we'll get them get, get some professional advice here. Any question doesn't have to be about the, the RoboCook. It can be about any RoboCook product. Um, if you are interested um, and you don't know how, to, how, how about getting one or you, or you don't know where to start, you can give us a call. We can actually arrange for uh, someone like Jamie, someone from RoboCook, to come to your kitchen, bring one of the models that you're interested in and do an on-site demo. It's something that we would, we would arrange to attend as well. So you've got, you've got us and RoboCook there giving you the best advice. If you're looking at um, maybe even bigger plans, bigger plans and you're looking for um, professional equipment but you're wanting to incorporate it into the whole kitchen, we've got an on-site lead designer who can come, attend your RoboCoop demo, do CAD drawings, site plans, full kitchen refurbishments um, and uh, it's definitely worth something getting in touch for. Um, advice on the phone, uh, we all do training like this, all the sales team upstairs, all my colleagues, we attend RoboCoop training. 
Uh, we like to know as much about the product as possible. Uh, so if you give us a call, um, we, we, we know as much as we possibly can. Nine out of ten times, I reckon we'd probably be able to help as well. Mm. Uh, so if you need any advice, get in touch. We're open eight till eight, Monday to Sunday, seven days a week. So it's never too late. It's never too early. Just get in touch. Yeah, and like you said, like the, the on-site demonstration is a great way to see the product. I think I think you need it with to your see recipe. It to, to, it's uh, what, watching it's great, but if if uh, it's no obligation. Um, you, Robo Coupon come. You don't. You don't have to buy anything right there and then. But you, you'll learn about it and you'll see how it fits into your kitchen. Well, like we've said before, it's, as chefs before, um, I think when I was a chef in the kitchens, uh, I used to think Robo Coupon did only a few machines. If I knew they would come out and do an on-site demonstration, and if I knew they would come and show me like the right bits of kit, yeah, you know, sure. we're not there to to sell you as many items as we possibly can. We're purely there just to go. Actually, what are you doing? Here's some ideas, machines, how much easier it just makes your life to do things. So, vegan mayonnaise. So what we're going to do, we set the speed there to 3,500 RPM again. Again, no uh, temperature. What we've now just swapped over, so we've taken the blender blade out. Yeah. And we're going to use the bowl cutter blade. Got okay. It. I just find it works slightly better when it comes to mayonnaise. Now, aquafabia, tin chickpeas. All we're going to do is pour in the juice. Okay, and it acts pretty much the same as your um, egg white. Okay, what I have done in the past, if you want that sort of yellower sort of colour, if I had a little bit of colouring, a little bit more mustard or something like that, if you want that yellower, but I find we prefer it to be quite white yeah. in the UK, it seems. So I'm going to add a little bit of mustard in there just for flavour. Again, but you could use Dijon. Yeah, uh, you, you could use whole grain. You for could the colour, you could even put a bit of saffron and soak yeah, a little bit of saffron yeah. in your chickpea water to get a nice haze, a nice orange hue to it. And I mean, this is one of the great things. If you make your own mayonnaise, you can just do whatever you want. I think I've uh, I've used chickpeas before um, for gluten-free cake recipes, but oh, actually yeah. the actual chickpeas themselves, I've never actually seen this done before. It's quite fascinating. So what we want to do now is we just want to whisk that up, okay? So we just go press the on button there. And let that just blend that up. <coughs> if you didn't have a bowl cutter, you'd have a whisk in a bowl. Okay, you'd just be oh, there I whisking know. and whisking and whisking. I know and first whisking. time how long that. <laughs> the great thing is this, we could do that, we can walk away, do something else, and then come back to it straight again afterwards. Which is why I find it so useful. Now just gonna blend that up, whisk that up, sorry, just so we get it like a foam. Okay? And you, you can, can see, see it, it on the yeah. top. See the bubbles and stuff, which is the other great thing of having a clear lid. So you can see exactly what's going on inside. You don't want the lid to become unclear. You don't want the food to block it. So you turn the, uh, the paddle and it cleans the lid for you so you can see what's going on inside the machine. So switch that off so we can have a look inside, see what's going on. It's definitely changed the structure already. There we go. You can see it. It's unbelievable. If you want to have a look at that. We've now got... It's almost like a Sabayon consistency already. Yeah. You see that? And that's just... Chickpea juice. That's Obviously unbelievable. The vinegar and the things, but we're adding that just for flavour. Um, and it's just fantastic how, how well it works. And if you taste this compared to a normal mayonnaise, you'll struggle to find the difference, to be honest with you. It's all about you seasoning really and what you, what you yeah. put into it at the end. You won't really taste it much of a difference, if I'm totally honest. So I'm going to turn that down ever so slightly, just so I can pour in the oil in the top. Now we're going to use rapeseed oil. I, I just like it as it's English. I think so. <laughs> uh, um, it, you know, support, support local supplies and foods, as they say. But again, you could use olive oil, vegetable oil, something like that. Like I think rapeseed oil's got more of a, I don't know, I think um, a, a flavour that's more exciting. But I think if you use just a, a strictly olive oil, you'll get that bitter olive but see, if flavour. You used, um, some people like it, some people don't. But. Yeah, yeah, and say, I, I'm not a huge fan of the olive oil. Uh, and mayonnaise, it's expensive but for olive oil. It's an option, you can use it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the machine on, let it just run, and then we're just through the hole in the top, we're just going to pour a steady stream of oil going in through the top there, so it's just going to emulsify. Which already looks a lot easier than trying to do that while whisking and holding a bowl, or getting another chef to pour it for you while you whisk it beside them. I know yeah. I used to do it with a damp cloth underneath <laughs> the bowl and whisking away for hours. Well, not hours, but, you know, for... Uh, longer than was needed. So we're just pouring that in a steady stream, okay? Speeding that up ever so slightly, just till we got like a nice emulsification in there. 
But again, if you then wanted to add any herbs or anything like that to this afterwards, we could do that quite easily. We're just chopping it through. Yeah. Turn this into a Mary Rose sauce or you can, whatever it, you want, basically. I wish I had one in my chef days because literally this will do your hollandaise and make your mayonnaise yeah. in, in one machine. It, but this it is, saves you so much time. I mean, everything we're showing you now is an ambient yeah, exactly. Once you start bringing the heat element into it as well, you then really are adding so many more functions. Like you said, your hollandaise, your bernaises. Uh, obviously not vegan, but um, you know they are. It, is it opens you a lot up, doesn't functions. it? It opens up the, yeah. the spe spectrum of what you can actually do with it. I think we've got our questions coming. I'll uh, fire away with this. Is the machine good for making soup? And that is from Peter. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's probably bread and butter for, for the robot cook making a soup, isn't it? Soup's easy, yeah. Obviously you're limited to the quantity. Yeah, of the course. The bowl's 3.7 litres in size, so you're probably going to make about a litre and a half, two litres tops, but I would say about a litre and a half uh, would be good for the, the space. Rule. I think the rule is if the if it if it's a RoboCoop six, it does half half the quantity. Yeah. I think that's the bit. When you're looking, if you're if you're looking and you want to make three liters of soup, you don't want to buy a three liter bowl capacity because it's going to be right up to you. It's not going to work. So I think you you, you split it down in half. So if, if you're if you're looking for a three liter soup, you go up to a RoboCoop six size. So yeah. I think that's the way it works. That's the best way. The to general work. rule of thumb. So yeah, you could put your soup in there, put the vegetables in quite chunky, chop them up, sweat them off, add your stock. Finish cooking off however long you want. Uh, let it rotate, maybe put the blade on reverse if you want to keep those bits in there. If not, I would then just keep um, cooking it out. And if you want it smooth, blend it on and maybe put the turbo function on if you want it nice yeah. and creamy. Uh, so, so yeah, sometimes soup's not all, always about quantity either. You could do like a hot velouté in there, so a nice creamy soup, yeah. uh, all the good bits in it, full fat cream and a couple of blocks of butter. Nice thick celeriac velouté, for instance, and a little cappuccino cups for a canopy. It doesn't have to be bulk all the time. I mean, one of the other great ones as well is purees. Yeah, purees. I was touching on this before. Purees are great. You could just cook your pure celeriac puree is really good. Just chop it up. It's quite chunks. Blend it, cook it, and it blends it down. I think, nice I think purees uh, are probably boring people when I talk about purees because I talk about it all the time. <laughs> uh, so wet, wet. With a puree, it's very easy to get wrong, and I think a lot of people get it wrong. And I think for a good puree, you need to break down the fibres enough for it to be smooth. I go out all the time for meals and you get a puree, but it, it's gritty. You can see it gritty on the plate. Yeah. I think you need something that, of this quality to break down the fibres in the vegetables enough to give you a smooth puree finish. Yeah. But, I mean, that's one of the nicest, easiest things to do with the purees and stuff. In it. So there we go, mayonnaise. You see, we've got that nice yellow that's, colour. That, that, Purely as rapeseed oil. That's amazing. That's why I quite like the rapeseed oil as a function. It holds its body. I never expected it to hold its body that well. And I mean that we've just made almost probably about half a litre, just over half a litre of mayonnaise in there. Um, I'm not sweating or stressed. I'm not, you know, I've not split it. I I've got issue with my whisk, you know, the bowl and stuff. That's a job that you could give to your commie chef. Go and yeah. do this. Go, even the guy that's washing the dishes, he can do a couple of bits and bobs in this while you're getting on with other bits and bobs. Totally. And I mean, if I if I was served that person in the restaurant, I'd be quite happy with that. I think I would see that as a luxury item. Yeah, I think, I think today a, a lot of food, it's about making everything homemade and putting care <laughs> into it and not buying it out of a tub. And I, I think mean, people buy into it. So I think that is, makes the difference. If you've got a nice, even a burger, but you make like a, a nice mustard mayonnaise that's uh, that in a burger. vegan, even, even a bean burger, vegan burger, doesn't always have to have meat in it, but that's, yeah. it's an extra layer into your burger. Value for the customer for eating, <coughs> and uh, value, for, value for the chef, because he's yeah. making money out of The profit chick margin water. in that is, yeah, <laughs> chickpea water that would normally go in the bin, a little bit of mustard, your oil, obviously, that's the most expense. Uh, you can even it. half and half the oil, though, you don't have to, no, you can, you can, you can I've, I've known chefs that you can use a little bit of vegetable oil, a little bit of rapeseed oil. It doesn't have to be all one. You can mix and match. Uh, yeah, another nice one, maybe some uh, garlic oil. Yeah, infused oils. Uh, infused oils would be really nice. Um, a rosemary, roasted rosemary oil or something like that. That would be, I've not tried it, but actually thinking about it, that would yeah, be Yeah, any flavour nice. you could get into the water of the chickpeas as well. It yeah. It would be a nice balance. Yeah, for that would work really, really well. So I'm just going to clean this up quickly. And then we're going to make, um, we're going to make hummus. Um, I'm going to show you sort of the consistencies of where we can get to. 
So we'll make a little bit of falafel just to show you the consistency, how quick it is. And then we'll go on and do uh, the beetroot hummus. Yeah, no, that um, sounds good. Another hummus. quick thing that you can do. Um, a couple of, couple of things there while Jamie's washing up. Um, we have a, 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 lot of, a lot of people um, phone up looking for uh, parts. So you might already have a robo coop that you want a replacement bowl, a replacement top. Um, I uh, personally know back from my chef is uh, never used to be able to find them, so we used to always uh, search through online websites looking for second-hand parts. If, if you've got one and you need parts, you can give us a call. We can source any parts, spares, anything that you need. We can get it for you. Um, if you even if you just send us a photo, if it's an older robo coop and you don't know what model it is, I'm pretty sure I could send it over to Jamie and he could tell me what it is and we can get the part. Um, it's uh, any other questions coming in, Andy? Peter, Peter, we're relying on you for some more questions. <laughs> I'm sure you've got some for me. Um, we've got um, stock on site, so you don't have to wait for delivery. Um, so if if, you, if you've got one, if, if if you've got one that's just gone down, you need a replacement in a hurry. You don't have to wait a week for delivery. Nine times out of ten, we'll have it on site and we can fire it out on a next day delivery. Um, so that, that's another benefit of contacting us. It's worth asking the question instead of just ordering one online. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the other great thing is with this, obviously, uh, you do get commercial warranty as well. Uh, and then, then you've got your, you guys to support it, to back it up and look after it for you guys. Um, I mean, we've had the cooks out now in the UK for about five, five maybe years? six years. So it's, with you know, regards <laughs> to Robocoop, it's actually still quite a new machine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it's you know it's we're still learning now. Yeah, well, I'm, what I'm you still can learning. Do on it and when stuff. I when I was a chef, a young lad, I thought RoboCoop literally made a stick blender and yeah. an R three O one. That's what I thought a RoboCoop was. Yeah. But the more the more the more that I get into it and realise the whole range of products are actually quite mind blowing. The the actual the, the range that RoboCoop do. Yeah. I think it's one of those machines. As a chef, you've always had a RoboCoop in the kitchen. Um, you know, it's always been there. But sometimes you just not fully realise what you can do in it and how far you can go with it. I mean, I've gone to some kitchens and they've had a robot coop sat there. Yeah. And then they're making their own pastry. We could do that in the machine or buying in the mayonnaise. That, that took, what was it, about a minute, minute and a half to make the mayonnaise. Yeah. So just doing those really quick, easy, simple jobs. Um, didn't add anything else onto your day. Yeah, I think 30 seconds or we've so. We've got a recipe, it. a RoboCoop recipe book, don't we? Yeah, yeah, so we've got the recipe books, but you can also download them on our website. Yeah, I think we're going to get them I on our website on yours, as well. Right? Some links and some yeah. some links to the recipe book. So even if you already have one and you're just want interested in what you can actually do with it, well, we'll get all of the recipes on our website so you can have a look through and maybe try a couple yeah. of things. I mean, if, you, if anyone has any recipes and makes some dishes up, it's great to share them you know, with yourselves on Twitter and ourselves, just so we can see what people are doing. Uh, we've had a few Asian chefs using the machine. Uh, we had um, one top guy who was using it, uh, Cyrus Toddywally. Mm. Um, he does a lot of stuff on BBC. I think he's OBE now as well, actually, for the top OBE. of my head. Um, That's us one day, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> he has said it's the best machine he's ever used for garam masala. It finished, does an absolute perfect finish to it. Wow. Right. Which is good, you know, for to come from someone of that standard. So, when we're going to make hummus, okay, so there's two different types of hummus, mainly. There's Greek and there's Lebanese. If we want to make Greek hummus, we use the bowl cutter blade. If we want to make uh, Lebanese hummus, we use the blender blade. And the reason is the bowl cutter blade will only get it to a certain texture, so it's still yeah. gritty. With uh, the, bl uh, the blender blade, we can get it down to a really fine, sort of creamy consistency. Smooth. Yeah, and nice and smooth. So we're going to use that. So in the machine, we're just going to put a couple of bits of garlic. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the chickpeas in here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just pulse it quickly. Because I want to show you, and obviously the aquafabia juice, again, keep that, use that for your cakes or your mayonnaise. Turn the chickpeas and you've made mayonnaise out of the water. And you've yeah. Few very simple ingredients we've got here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a little bit of a pulse, okay? Um, and now we've got in there. We've pretty much got your falafel mix. 
Like so you'd add a bit of onion in there, obviously, as well, some herbs. Everyone's got a slightly different recipe. Um, I like to add a little bit of harissa paste and things like that into my coriander seeds, etc. I, I, I like spice. I like it hot. Yeah. So yeah. that was a pulse. You couple of seconds. Chop chilies and you get a jalapeno, anything that you wanted in there, reverse it and mix it up all in one And to bowl. make your own, it's so easy. I mean, a tin of chickpeas, you know, it's a pound or something like that. It's not much. So in that, we're going to make beetroot hummus, okay? So... Beetroot, I would normally add tahini, okay? But today, just so we can keep the ingredients nice and simple, I'm just going to add a little bit of oil in there. So we're just going to use rapeseed oil, just to bring that texture down. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice. But again, recipes are, you know, everyone's got their own recipe um, and what you can make. I've seen so many different types of recipes. I mean, supermarkets these days are selling so many different types of hummus, variations, flavours. Um, and again, use the maybe a bit of roasted rosemary salt or something like that, and they would be quite nice. Or and start doing your own your own things. And the for the restaurants, for the chef's perspective, the profit margin on hummus uh, is huge. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's why you see a lot of restaurants these days doing their own hummus. Every possible penny you can in the product if you use them. Well, yeah. I mean, like we've seen it, we're using the juice of the chickpeas, we're using the actual chickpeas themselves. That water goes straight down the waste disposal all yeah. the time. I think we've got a question in. Yeah. Um, is, the, is the machine cheaper than a Thermomix and that's from Jeff? So, it's a, it, it's a, yes and no. It's a hard question to answer. I think um, yeah, yeah. people don't realise is, um, I think Thermomix <coughs> is more of a domestic product. Yeah. It's, uh, so this is a commercial product. This is a commercial that. product. I think the thing to look when at the machine, if comparing it to any other machine on the market, the size of the bowl is 3.7 litres, which yeah. is quite important. One, it's commercial, stainless steel bowl. You've got the internal paddle. You can use it as a bowl cutter, so we could do mayonnaise. You can use it as a blender, so you've only got two machines in one. Yeah. The temperature will go up by one degree increments, which is very useful, so yeah, you haven't right. got like a 10 degree jumps or something. Um, the blade will go in reverse, so you can now stir it. Um, and you've got all your programs and your functions and things. So, yes and no. no yes, it is cheaper because you've got two, three machines in one. Uh, so, it, it, you know, that's the best way to look at it. And plus, like we said, it's commercial. It's not yeah, domestic. Yeah, I don't think um, for us, um, working with RoboCook, if you buy RoboCook, it's not just the machine that you get. You get a lot of support and different avenues that you wouldn't get just buying something else. Yeah. So, you, not only do you have the, the support of... The manufacturer Robocoop is the support of guys like Jamie that are on the phone. Yeah. They can always pick up the phone and speak to speak to you if you have one, speak to you if you don't have one. You can and speak you... to me, you can speak to Catercook. Uh, Cater Quick, we've got a service team upstairs dedicated. They're in eight to eight, seven days a week. We should it's... change it to Cater Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Cater Cook is our Robocook. It's, it's, it's not just the product you're buying, you're buying into yeah. um, service, uh, customer service. You're getting and the you... equipment and the support at the same time. That's the other way to look at it is, right, well, if you've got a kitchen and you've got a bowl cutter and you've got a cooking, heating blender or whatever, if you combine the price of the two, it's more than this machine. Yeah, Where with this machine, you've got it all in one unit, nice and neat and tidy, and you've got all those functions at the same time. So in there, we've got beetroot, chickpeas. I would normally add tahini, but at the moment, I'm just going to use a little bit of oil, some seasoning. Um, some people like to add ice just to keep yeah. the temperature you down. You make your own tahini, maybe. Yeah, you could do uh, your tahini in here using the blender attachment yeah, just quite happily. Yeah. So we're just going to blend this up. So what I want to do, I want to show you in a second, we're going to take this to a Greek texture. Okay, so we're taking this now, this is what we would classify as a Greek hummus, okay, yeah, which has got slightly there. more texture. So if you just wanted to go to that level, you just use the bowl cutter attachment, not the blender attachment, okay. So I'll put some of that aside so you can see the difference in the two yeah, textures. Texture. So that would be your 
great. But you see with the beetroot, it just gives it a really nice colour. And flavour-wise, it just gives it that slightly more sort of yeah. rooty and, and base to it. Isn't it something that you put breadsticks in? You can use it for all sorts of different things. You can incorporate something like that into loads of different yeah. Uh, vegan burgers as a spread. Oh, if you didn't have the vegan mayonnaise, the, that that would be really nice. Oh, maybe a bit of lime juice in there as well instead to sort of take the rootiness off. But again, it's open to what you want to do, pretty much. So we're just going to blend that up on a higher speed, turbo boost it, so we're getting a creamier consistency. Okay. So this will just be a lot more refined. Yeah. So with the turbo function, we're now getting a four and a half thousand RPM. Which as far as I'm aware is the fastest food processor on the market that I'm aware of. I've not known anything else but the four and a half. No, that's as fast as I'm aware of to be honest with you. You see how it's still blending it up there. Let's have a look, let's see what we've got. Okay. So we could probably run that a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna do this now just to show you. We've got a nice smoother sort of texture, consistency there. I mean we run that for like another minute or so. We'll then get that even finer. I think chefs will buy into this a lot because it doesn't just do one, you can you make it your own. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're using a bit of equipment, but you still you still keep the personality in what you're doing. And, and you can control the texture. You can control the product that you're getting. I think the problem is if you're buying mayonnaise, if you're buying your nut butters, if you're buying your hummus, you can't control the final finish. You can't control the flavour. You're restricted to what you buy. But by doing it yourself, using one machine, and the great yeah. thing is with this, we haven't even touched the heat function. No, all we've done is use the two blades. Is, we haven't um, touched the heat. The, you, we could do a whole other demo on the cooking functions, but it doesn't just do heating functions. Yeah. You use it for all sorts of prep in your kitchen. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, that's uh, what we've been, 35 minutes or so. Obviously, we've been talking, but we've made one, two, three, four, five, with four main dishes um, in that time. If we weren't talking, we probably could have done it in 10 Maybe yeah, 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, if, you know. if, if that, you'd have everything set out yeah. and you'd be in the zone and you would just go through each one. And I've purposely washed the bowl up just to show you the timing, how long it takes to clean it up and put it back and then go back and do another thing. So it just shows you how quick. Yeah, exactly. It and it's, it's something that if you're doing breakfast, for instance, and you're doing your holidays, your bacon's in, your sausages in, customers are taking their seats, you don't need to be worrying about your holidays because you can make it two minutes before service yeah. starts. Bang, it's ready to go from your RoboCook onto the plate. Well, that's a great thing, like you said, with the, with the sauces, uh, sauces. Obviously, hollandaise and, and stuff's not vegan, but most restaurants aren't just vegan, just vegetarian. This is showing you some elements that you can do for the vegans and vegetarians, yeah. but then they'll still maybe be doing their steak sauces in here, yeah. their, their risottos in here, um, their creme pat in here, shoe paste. The thing, the thing I like, um, and, and I believe, is that um, if, if, if you have a dietary requirement or a preference, the, the answer shouldn't be, can I have that off the menu, but don't give me this because I can't have it, I don't yeah. like it. And what you get is the same dish, but minus an element. I think this can help you um, look after that customer. Oh, I have a dietary requirement. Can you omit this from the dish? No, don't worry. I'll make yeah. you a vegan mayonnaise in this in two yeah. minutes. Yeah. And it'll look exactly, exactly. the same. And, and it, it comes, it, that's customer service. That's yeah. little things like that that you might not think about. They make the big difference. Well, like you said, yeah, to make a vegan mayonnaise in here during service, we're talking a minute and a half. Yeah, it's exactly. actually quite quick. To make a mayonnaise in a bowl without the bowl cutter in the middle of service, no chance. No, exactly. But once you've got the right bit of kit, you can. It, do the so list goes on. I mean, if it, you pay that a little attention to detail and take two minutes to utilize your equipment like that, there's a big difference between saying, no, I can't do you that mayonnaise on that dish. The customer might not, isn't going to come back for you, I can't do that. Yeah. But they will come back for you, yeah, sure, I'll do it in two minutes yeah. for you. Well, like you said, I think the most important thing is, if, you know, for anyone that's interested in the machine, whether it's the RoboCook or any of the machines, give you guys a call. We'll come to site. You can either come here or see to our office in Twickenham. Yeah, and we'll um, attend. We'll, we'll, we'll come down and visit yeah. at the same time. Bring the machine down. We'll go through your recipes. You show us what you want to do, how you normally do it. We'll put it in the machine. We'll go through each thing. We'll give you tips on 
what we do use in the machine and how best to get the most out of it um, and show you what's possible. We might see something that you're buying in that you can make yourself and add yeah. a minute onto your day, but save a fortune in cost. And, I mean, if I was to sell that to a customer as an extra pot as a premium, I could probably charge quite you know, a couple of pounds for that quite happily. That would cover my cost for a whole litre. Yeah, but and it, is it worth amount. that? Yeah. Because it's homemade and it's a quality product. You don't want your unique. two, three pounds for this. Yeah, and it's unique to your restaurant. Yeah. And no one else is doing it to that to your specific recipe, which is why I think it's so you know, it's great to do it. And if, if I was in the kitchen, I think I would go back to trying to make as many of these different points. And then you're buying local as well. You know, you get your local oils or um, you know as many ingredients as you possibly can beetroot maybe from the local farm during while it's in season and you know so you can play around with it it's huge yeah. I think it's great I think I, I've I've been a chef for a number of years and um, I've been at Cater Quick now for a few years but I'm still very passionate about food mm. food at home uh, I can talk customers to death on the phone about kitchens and experiences yeah. and what equipment I would buy but every day is a learning day and in what half an hour I've learned so much yeah. but if i was a chef taking that on board that's a massive difference to my menu yeah. to the workload to the younger members of the team um i mean ho hollandaise and mayos and stuff's generally something that chefs can sometimes be a bit scared of but that you can't go wrong go I mean, right the, the, the 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 people learning can now make this stuff yeah. which is very important but well, the other thing is, is if for the chef's perspective the head chef could set the programs set the stages so let's say for example you're doing the mayonnaise vegan mayonnaise you could set it to run at a certain speed for a certain amount of time because you know that recipe will do it then you set it to run again for a certain amount of time and then it will stop so you know you're going to get that consistency yeah when it comes to hollandaises and hot sauces it's great because then when it stops it goes into hold mode so it'll just uh, but you could then set it to say maybe hold at 50 60 degrees so it'll just hold that hollandaise maybe for 45 minutes one hour just to hold it there so then it's but it'll stir ever so gently so it'll just keep it there for you. So you've got then a holding device as well as you know everything yeah. else that you can do as well. I think it's great. Um, <coughs> and what you were saying about the demo and visit and site and stuff that we, we, we can attend and while we're there, while, while Jamie can go through this sort of stuff with you, we can have a look at your kitchen and what power you've got and what, what, what size equipment that you can go in. We can provide uh, a lot of technical information while we're on site. Um, we we uh, design uh, design kitchens and canopy systems and everything so we, it, it, it's not just the robocook we we can do incorporate robocook and robocoop into a whole kitchen design yeah it's always open for conversation uh, so if you're interested in anything we've talked about today like don't hesitate to get in touch we've got info email you can get us on facebook i'm sure the videos will be posted to youtube so you can watch them at a later date so check us out on youtube drop us a subscribe drop a like we'll keep you posted and um, on that note i think we're talking about um uh, we've not got a date set, but I think we're looking at doing another short, quick, oh, pizzas. quick stream on pizza. Yeah, yeah. Now that sounds uh, quite basic, but there's a ma massive variety of things that Huge. go on pizzas. Pizza's a big business, a big money maker. Loads of people are doing it. We can use the bowl cutters to make your dough. Fantastic way of making dough for pizzas. Which is something I didn't really even think about until you can use it. your you, again. You could use a blender to make the tomato sauce or a stick blender. Or recently, we've been doing a few places we've used our mash attachment ah. because it te keeps the texture. And then when it comes to you grating your cheese, you cutting your vegetables, your mushrooms, all that stuff, we've got a machine specific just for pizza. It's all very. It sounds all very simple, but it's very time-consuming oh, preparation. Huge. And again, uh, I think most restaurants these days are doing pizzas, it's <laughs> exactly. huge, especially you, now the summer's coming if, on board. If you can imagine how much cheese you need in a pizza shop over one weekend, yeah. and I've been there, and you've not got a good grater or a robocoop to help you, <laughs> it is Jesus. the most time-consuming job. It's messy time-consuming it's you're just throwing money down and if toilet. you're grating your own cheese you decide on the size you use fresh cheese you're not using any cheese that's pre-grated that might be coated in something yeah which doesn't melt as well on a pizza so by doing it yourself you can decide some people have a blend so they'll have a percentage of this cheese percentage of that cheese you can decide that once you've got the right bit of yeah kit, the decisions in your hand you can do whatever you want basically yeah so there's a lot to talk about we'll hit you up with that next time yeah. i think it uh, might be an opportunity for a bit of a cook off maybe do a pizza each a different yeah different recipe of pizza maybe bit both both use the robocoop something like that yeah. but we'll keep you posted on facebook 
Um, well, if, if you're an existing company, uh, customer, I'm sure we'll get an email sent out to you with dates, times, we'll get something organised and go through the CL50 pizza, yes. stick blender, a couple other bits and bobs. Yeah, that'd be yeah. really good. Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Catch us next time. Cheers, Winky. I'm going to have a taster now.